Hello, my name is Jennifer Lacey, and this is my Lucid Chart presentation about vulnerable populations. As you can see in the blue bubbles here, I've listed six different risk factors that would make someone considered into a vulnerable population. And for our purposes, um, we'll define vulnerability um, as kind of a population that's more at risk for harm or trauma or any sort of adverse um, thing that would affect their well-being more so than um, maybe a majority of the population. So I'll kind of start in the left-hand corner here about um, those who are without a home. Um, just because this population is extremely vulnerable to multiple different things because they kind of have overlying all these different um, risk factors li listed here. Um, just with being without a home, you have lack of shelter, lack of hygiene that um, makes you at more risk for infection. Um, so you can kind of see how it's connected to infectious disease up there. But also um, those without a home are more predisposed that kind of unmanaged chronic health conditions um, listed here just have uncontrolled diabetes, hypertension, COPD, um, poor oral care, um, potentially cancer. Um, and this population also has lack of nutrition just due to um, not enough resources for food, maybe you know, from food shelters, they're not receiving the best quality of balanced nutrition. Um, they have lack of healthcare, which kind of ties in again to unmanaged chronic illness, um, but also may predispose them to more acute illness as well. Um, but yeah, this kind of ties into our other um, risk factor too of being po in poverty. Those who live below the poverty level suffer the same sort of thing that those without a home do. They um, might not have the resources to buy, um, you know, adequate nutrition, um, which also predisposes them to other illnesses such as um, obesity, um, maybe poor, like malnourishment. Um, that sort of thing. Um, this group also may lack um, funds to participate in higher education um, and may not even afford a nice house with proper ventilation or, you know, old paint or all those other environmental hazards that those who live below the poverty level might be exposed to. Um, kind of working in this counterclockwise way here. Um, a big population that does live below the poverty level is um, those, the rural population and the migrant workers. Um, these people may immigrate from other countries or just, you know, by many generations work in a rural setting. Um, and commonly this population lacks education. They may have language barriers to our country and they're kind of isolated from the um, urban communities that may offer all the resources that they could largely benefit from, but they're all located, you know, far away from them, which also takes transportation and funding to maintain the transportation, transportation, et cetera, um, which makes them extremely vulnerable to different, um, multiple different things. Um, so with that comes stress, uh, the so social isolation and different, um, things there, which stress predispos predisposes someone to participate in drug and alcohol use, which could eventually lead to addiction and abuse, um, which kind of ties into this upper right corner up here, this addiction and violence realm. Um, with alcohol and drug abuse may come, you know, frustration, anger, um, intoxication might lead to um, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse of others around them, um, marital abuse, child abuse, that sort of um, unfortunate realm. Um, you know, also with like poverty and the stress may come like criminal behavior such as um, theft or, you know, larger scale violence between neighbors or something like that. Um, so that's these two populations become very intertwined with each other, this kind of addicted violent realm um, and those living with either like poverty or the rural migrant workers. Um, so moving kind of along our flowchart here, um, poor coping in this kind of drug use 
uh, can definitely predispose someone to mental illness if it doesn't come from something else like post-traumatic stress or, you know, we talked a lot last week about um, adverse childhood experiences. Um, that can leave a big scar and um, brings us to our mental illness um, bubble here. Um, mental illness covers a large umbrella of different things, uh, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, um, other conduct behaviors like uh, anorexia, bulimia, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, all these sorts of different um, mental illness um, conditions can either uh, create a self-care deficit. Um, again, poor coping scratch strategies can also feed back into that drug and alcohol abuse um, and social skill impairment, um, especially those with schizophrenia or either personality disorders or thing may have just like a compromised social interaction skill. So they'll be, um, they're more vulnerable to uh, social isolation or um, impaired social interaction that can kind of leave that void of that psychosocial need that we all have. Um, relating back to our infectious disease, um, those with mental illness may, um, just see there as part of coping or that need to connect with another human um, can do um, create like poor impulse control. They become sexually promiscuous, um, which, you know, if you're not protected can lead into like a sexually transmitted disease um, and ties back into our other infectious disease realm here. Um, just you know, if unmanaged or leading to other things, um, other overlying conditions uh, makes you vulnerable for um, unmanaged care and, get, and getting really serious if it's not treated. So that kind of ties back into our um, overlying large umbrella of what we're talking about as vulnerable populations. Um, so as you can see, all these different things, it's a flow chart for a very good reason, because all these can kind of intertwine with one another, overlap. You can't just, or you might not just fall into one category here. You can have like all sorts of everything going on and overlying. Um, so I think it's important to recognize these populations and as nurses know where we can intervene and make our these um, life better for these people and just create tools and strategies and give resources so that these people can reach out and better their situation just to strive forward to improve their own lives and prevent any or work towards um, prevent any preventable disease or um, adverse condition and um, just keep moving forward for them but also to um, kind of create that synergy with them, their children, their relationships to kind of like on a bigger community scale making uh, life better for everyone. Um, but thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope you all have a fabulous week.